Well, it's Groundhog Day, again, and that must mean that we're up here at Gobbler's Knob. If you take Gobbler's Knob and uh, uh, substitute that with Rings of Power... <laughs> we're in the Southlands again. We're in the Southlands again. 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 <laughs> we're in Arda. Oh, God. Unfortunately. Well, can, I, can I point something out? Remember I said last week how Ryan Johnson and The Last Jedi... And this series drives me nuts because they do stuff like that. that's pretty cool, mm-hmm. and then they surround it with crap. Right, right, right. This is crap. <laughs> T- this week was crap. You mean? Yeah, I know how you feel. Um, I mean, you know the 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 idea of a like, hey, let's light off this volcano, and hey, we're in Mordor, is like, wow, that's that's actually kind of cool. That uh, it's like Mordor was created by the agency of a certain evil person that we like named Adar, right? Right. But then, this week, can I start at the end for you this week's review of Episode 7? Yes. This is how Episode 7 ended, and I just, I have a, a serious bone to pick with the decision that led to the creation of this particular ending, which I think was oh. embarrassing for so many reasons. Now, when I when I just said how last week, I'm like, hey, that's cool. It kind of became Mordor, right? Yeah. For anyone who knows anything about Tolkien, they recognize that, hey, he just created Mordor, right? That right. was at the end of last episode. Here we are at the end of the next episode, and it like it literally spells it out for the audience in case they missed it. They they really don't like us at all. As they far as an think we're goes. stupid. And, and the thing is, is like people who know Tolkien already knew that this was Mordor, right? But they're appealing to new fans. They're like, some people don't know that Mordor exists in the Lord of the Rings. But, I don't know who. But my point is, even if that's the case, let's say there's this new pool of fandom that hasn't been tapped yet who don't know anything about Middle Earth or Tolkien, right? They're, they're untapped, they're the untapped fandom. They don't know anything about Mordor. So right. it doesn't make, it, it doesn't tell them anything to say, hey, we're in Mordor now, because they don't know what Mordor is yet. What did he say? Like, this uh, has always been what, the Southlands. What, what are we gonna name it now? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Master, what, oh, is it still gonna be called the Southlands? And oh, I'm like- Master. <laughs> the word the Southlands is just a descriptive of it being kind of in the South. You know what have been really funny is if uh, 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 Adar would have been like, oh, Waldrig, you're so, you're so you're unburdened so by brains. <laughs> <laughs> you're so unburdened by intelligence. <laughs> and now I'm going to get some MS Paint guide to write Mordor on the screen. Uh, dude, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Did, like... This is like the first, like, this is the second cringe. The first one was when they threw rocks at the boat. Uh, in, mm. the, in the Oh, there's been one. so many more cringes. I, but this is like the first, like, uh, oh, right, <laughs> that level. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. It was like, no, it was, like, a, like, it was I, a level I want of cringe. This, I want this to go away. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Like, I don't know why like, it's. It struck me so forcefully the cringe that this that this scene induced. It was like okay, so the, the very fact that they had to kind of tell us and actually spell it out for the for us who already knew that this was now Mordor was cringe in and of itself. But the visual aesthetic of that script on the screen and how it was kind of written in fiery letters, the font and the superimposition of this font over this image, it took a really nice, probably very expensive image. And it made me think of something like, you know, something like this, like really bad, (laughs) (laughs) really bad science fiction fantasy covers for self-published first time authors. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or or better yet, like I'm way more into this self-published author. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. I want to read 
uh, Moira, the Zorin, the Zorzin War by Lawrence Ambrose. No, no, I, I totally agree with you. But the thing is, like, the people who self-publish and do this stuff, you know what, man? I, they're, they're working on a no-string budget. You know what I'm talking about? So this but, being cringe. Okay, yeah. So What else is cringe? I felt when Galadriel got uh, engulfed with, with uh, lava and smoke and flame and mm-hmm. all this stuff, that should have been it for the season for Galadriel and everybody in the village. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, it would have left like, us like wondering. That would have been just a tremendous cliffhanger, and 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 again, subverting expectations. Um, you know, two episodes left, and it's like this is it for here. You know what I'm talking about? And everyone would be wondering, well, what, what what's going to happen to her? It'd be kind of like when everyone assumed like Gandalf was dead after right. he fell. Right, or, or you know, no, Balrog. You, yeah, right. And if you wanted to, like, really kind of like you know, like, okay, we have to show one more time. The last five minutes of of episode eight of, of episode eight should have been gla- the this Gladriel right. not helping anybody <laughs> and just walking through. You're right, not helping anybody. That just struck me as so bizarre. Like how? Why they they must did they overlook it? Like you you, you had her what? waking up and all these suffering people around her trapped in burnt out buildings and she just wanders off. Here's the woman. Here's the woman with, or the elf, elf and maiden, with all the healing powers, and she's just kind of like seeing all this devastation around her. And the whole first half of this episode is her just kind of wandering away from I all mean, the devastation. You know what? It could be like shell shock, PTSD, whatever you want to call it, right? I mean, but they did not make that clear. You know, well, like, she's having they, this. It was she's having a fairly intelligent conversation with uh, the one person she does manage to find, Theo. Right, right, right. But my point is, though, like, if that was the case, okay, if that was the case, they didn't spell it out clear. They're like, oh, these people are smart enough to know that she's shell-shocked, but they're not smart enough to know that the Southlands is now Mordor. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? It's well, like, that, but, al- but also, take like... Take your pick! Okay, but, but she's acting like she's looking for them, but she yeah. was just... She was there, and she wandered away, and I'm, she's, like, looking for her group, and I'm like, you were just with them. I mean, you were in the burnt out village, right? Am I missing yeah, something here? I mean, she woke up and there was like the burnt out village all around her. But again, there, there was so like, again, like this is like the thing that, that's maddening about this, this series is that, yeah, she's walking around, right? Um, you know, you like, you're, you're seeing people like, you know, like the, the burning ass horse and stuff like that, that just yeah. kind of runs through and then, you know, people and like, yeah, she doesn't do anything, but now, like, there, there's so many unanswered questions. Like, you know, Adar is like trapped in a building. How did he escape? You know, I mean, it, it, like, we knew he was going to escape, right? Right. But it's like the last time we saw him, he was like tied up, lying on a floor, and now he's like, yeah. he's, he's, you know. I mean, I actually, speaking of that, I, I actually have to confess, when this scene opened on episodes, uh, episode seven, my first. My first reaction was kind of like you said, like, oh, shoot, they, it would be actually nice to get a break from Galadriel for a few episodes, and they could yeah. have used this as a means to do that. But when Galadriel finally woke up and she looked around and there was all this devastation, I'm like, ooh, maybe like all the Numenorians that we haven't grown to love... <laughs> Are, are have been killed and oh, that would geez. make sense because she's you know as an elf there would be like three of them left right like just a few of them left just a few like oh uh and it makes sense because it's hard to kill an elf you know what i mean right, yeah and so well, maybe yeah. she was the only one with enough you know what do you call it in dungeons and dragons enough hit points constitution <laughs> enough hit constitution points. yeah she to, made to, her saving throw versus uh volcanoes Right, saving throw versus volcanoes, and she pulled through, and I'm like, oh, ooh, this is actually cool, because they can just kind of clear the board of all these characters that I don't like, and and just repopulate the series with another set of characters that yeah, you know, well, I might, they, they, I might they, like, but... They, they would never know that people don't like these characters, but right. what would be interesting, what would be interesting is if, like, you know, Muriel were dead, Elendil and Isildur you know, survived, right? Mm. And then maybe uh, Isildur's buddies, right? But uh, 
trying to get the Numenorians to come back over to Middle Earth and and fight. That yeah. might have been, you know, that might have been, yeah, like interesting, kind of like you know, or something. But right. at the end of the day, it was like, okay, it, to dash my hopes, one by one, they kept finding these people. Like, oh shoot, darn it, there's Theo. Oh, oh so dark, dark, you know, girl. like all oh, the queen. Oh, there she is. Oh no, God damn it! Uh, yeah, but all again, these people are still I'm, alive. I'm gonna give you kind of a, a little bit of a pass because you don't watch a whole lot of TV, you know. But I mean, again, this, this is kind of <laughs> typical of <laughs> yeah, of I know, I know these series. You know what I'm saying? I, I realize I mean, that. I mean, I yeah, guess I but, realize that. Yeah, but the thing is, man, it's like. Like, so, like, during this whole thing, you know, like, you know, they're they're doing weird stuff. You know, you learn that she is, in fact, married, so that whole Celeborn uh, conundrum has been answered. That was you know? one of the very few slightly interesting points in this episode. Yeah, so this scene where she's talking to Theo, the and Theo. the scene actually goes on, I think, way too long. It was like, it was a long conversation. Yeah. And and there wasn't a whole lot happening, but you know, to its credit, it did divulge one or two interesting things about Galadriel and that she was married, like you said. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What were you going to say? No, yeah, yeah, she's married and and it was a kind of a um I mean, it wasn't interesting, but at least she had a little a different range of, mo- of emotion. Yeah. You know, I I think this like I think if, she, she if, showed her re- more reflective, more, you know. Yeah. And this is like the tur- I think this is the turning point for Galadriel becoming less the warrior, you know, commander and more of like the right. Galadriel that everybody was hoping would be here already anyway. But, right. You know. Right. I, I mean, like we've like everyone, everyone has said, like for someone that's 5000 years old, these kinds of like, oh, I'm, I've had this moment of growth where I'm not such a like a heartless you know cold heartless person anymore i'm going to be more warm and approachable and I'm empathetic yeah. and i'm like shouldn't i mean you're 5000 <laughs> shouldn't yeah, you yeah. have had that like 400 4950 years ago or something yeah what 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 are the uh, uh what are, what are the what are the tweens for uh for for elves like uh, 1000 oh, yeah right <laughs> <laughs> he's only a thousand give him a break but not to be so nitpicky but this scene it, it bothered me because it went on a, quite a long time and yeah. again there were some really bad lines but you know when she did divulge about Celeborn, it was fine uh, it was pretty interesting but the other thing that kind of bothered me that for some reason she see that face she has now it's like this kind of blank expression mm-hmm. and you know she maybe she looks slightly reflective but for some reason it was really bothering me because when she was talking at this moment like she was hardly moving her lips she just looked like a ventriloquist dummy yeah, yeah, yeah. he's like hi i'm married i'm married to Caliborn. Uh, I, uh, yeah like this yeah, yeah. i was like i have a husband and oh oh and the other annoying thing about the scene is Hold that th- the um the ill-fitting armor yeah yeah the that Caliborn had ill-fitting armor and she called him a silver clam or something like that right but Caliborn, like yeah that's kind of dumb i mean that that's just that's just writers trying to be Cle- endearing endearing or they're trying to be uh, they're trying to like play with the the myth the mythology yeah the myth- yeah. And and but the thing is, is when they do that, they need to again. They need to pay attention to the nature of the race they're talking about. So no. it's really not like an elf to have ill-fitting armor. And if they did, they wouldn't yeah. mock someone for it. They just fix it. Yeah, Kelleborn, the bumbling husband, the bumbling husband with the ill-fitting armor, and oh, you why like you? A, I oughta just like her right, <laughs> right like, in like, the kiss. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like Kelleborn's no Ralph Cramden. Gladriel, why are you calling me a clam? I'm going to send you to the moon. You're going to meet a Rendell in person. <laughs> and they do a little bit of that, uh, obviously, with the the whole Disa Durin dynamic. I know. Where it's they, like, they, pow, right in the kisser. I kind of. I mean, I mean it's look, not so much that. It's more like. Yeah. Uh, they're more uh, like Ricky and Lucy. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Where it's right. like. Oh, like, Ricky. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, she was talking like this the whole time. I was like, "Could you please move your face? Why weren't? Why aren't <sighs> you moving your face?" 
I want to see this uh, this actress and 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 something another, else, something, and just so she, I can. Who like, knows? You know, she might be dazzling in something else, but I just feel like it was a bad. She's probably going to end up in the DC universe, and then everyone's oh. going to hate her again. You know, <laughs> these people, like the Harfoots, they're heartless. This, they are. They don't give a shit about anybody. <laughs> you know what they I'm kept it. Yeah. But then Nori's dad gives this like speech, like, "Oh, we just love each other. We, we heart, we heartfoots with a twinkle in our eye and a, a spring in our step. We wander through the world with a big heart, open to the universe." And, and like, we were thankful, <laughs> except when y- if you get stung by bees, then you're, f- <laughs> you, you know, get, if you get stung we by eat, bees. We see two ro- two cups of hot gravel in the morning. <laughs> And we were thankful. Every know. morning we'd have to clean the lake. <laughs> With our tongue. <laughs> anyway. Uh, yeah, no, these are, they're like, they're, like, so uncare. They they don't give a shit, you right. know? It's like, right. oh, this person, this this being from Star, whatever, like, from the from the heavens, healed this. Like, oh, that, that, that might be handy to have around. Let's go and, uh, you know, like, say, hey, we were mistaken. Yeah. We're like, oh, what happened to Halbrand, not Sauron? And they're like, oh, he's like near death. And he has this right. gaping flesh wound on the front of his body, like, and he looked like he was about to die. <laughs> Tis and everyone, but a scratch. And everyone's very solemn. And even yeah. Galadriel's like, oh, this man needs elf medicine. Maybe you she know? healed him. Maybe she healed him. But then they, well, be that as it may, I mean, she might have. She didn't give a shit about anybody else, obviously. I well, mean, she's right. Very, no, there was a lot of really dire looking people yeah, in there. Yeah, glad and, he was a, is an elitist, <laughs> obviously. Right, so she's going to heal, heal this guy. But she heals yeah. this guy. But the next, I mean, does she? I don't know. They, they don't show it. I mean, you'd think that they would do a healing montage, at yeah. least. But even right. if or, they or, left or do it, one like, did you ever see the Karate Kid where Mr. Miyagi went? <laughs> yeah, they, they that's what Galadriel that. did. <laughs> they should have done that. That would have been sweet. But th- it was like the very next scene. It, it was not a good transition because <laughs> I know, because it left us wondering. Like, wait, has the has the healing been has it has the healing been administered or has it? Yeah, has she given this guy first aid? Because he's <laughs> dude, now he walking a, out. Dude, he got on his like horse smoking like, a cigarette. He, like pff, that was. He got amazing. on his horse. He's like, he, he got on his horse. He's like, later, bitches. <laughs> you know, he got like, on his horse. He's like, I'm fine. I'm fine. Yeah, but I know. He should have had his hair all messed up, and he's like, wow, that was an amazing ride. <laughs> Thanks, Galadriel. Yeah. Thanks. I, re- I feel much better. Yeah, that's, now, that's good. That guy looks like he is about to perish. Right, right. He looks that's, mad too. He's like, oh, yeah. I hate you. I hate you, Galadriel. Yeah, I hate that's you. the. That's the image we got, and we're like, okay, this guy's about to die. Is he going to survive even? But then again, Bronwyn like was like on death's door, and now she's and like, she's fine. You know, I was, yeah, I was so mad. Like, like, she got an arrow it. through her like chest. Why you know? won't these people die? None of them. <laughs> no one was dead. That sounds so mean. I don't want them to die, but like I want. I'm not to like be that able... with normal humans, of course. Right, right, right. But I these are imaginary people bit. from. <laughs> these are invented yeah, I know. characters. Like some of the comments, like these are imaginary people. You guys are taking this way too seriously. It's like oh, we know. <laughs> Believe me, we know. Yeah, it's. Good. Know? I mean, granted, it's a little bit. It's a little bit fun. <laughs> this, yeah, doing I mean, this is on. is fun. We wouldn't do yeah. it if it wasn't fun. <laughs> I know. It's like come on, guys. <laughs> okay. One it's more like thing. we're all doing this because we're all like again, we're all we're, just like just oh, we're taking a piss out of these people. It's yeah, a, it's a little bit of a fun thing to do. Yeah, all right. You want to talk yeah, about like like Je- like Jeff Be- like Jeff Bezos gives a shit about what we he think. doesn't care. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, he does not care. All right, you want to talk about the dwarfs? It's, yeah, I don't know. Oh boy, look at Paul Durin. This will be a last. Paul oh, Durin. Yeah. So the dumb thing is this whole thing like that Mithril is this, like, Centrum Ma- Silver. Yeah, hold on, hold on. Yeah, yeah, Mithril, because the, the, the... Oh, yeah. The, the, the uh, they, elves they, are addicted to they're it. They're addicted to it. They need their you got, fix. You got they any their... more of that meth, real? <laughs> <laughs> that's not supposed to be... Man, that's, like they're going to be like this, like, <laughs> I need some meth. I need some Mithril. <laughs> I'm dying over here. I need some Mithril. <laughs> <laughs> Come on! Like, it's like they're drug addicts. It's like we're counting. I'll, I'll sell you a half a hamburger. 
Yeah. I'll I can have a hammer. <laughs> I'll blank your blank. I'll blank your. I'll blank your blank for some <laughs> mithril. <laughs> you you do what? <laughs> I know. What'd you say? <laughs> Man, that mithril's delicious. <laughs> <laughs> Half a cheeseburger. <laughs> I made four cheeseburgers. You can have three of them. Give me some mithril. <laughs> God, it's so stupid. Oh it's my so God. stupid. But it's I mean, so seriously, dumb. it's like. The, the idea i mean it's just it's just not very um it's it's, it's not fun. sustainable it's like it's so like you re- so you're dumb. really going to have a race of people that needs to have a silver like centrum silver in their diet yeah. in order just to survive tolkien he, the the elves were supposed to fade away i mean that was just their fate and you know they're they're immortal but they're just supposed to kind of like go into uh you know. Yeah, but 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 the whole idea is like, oh, well, the leaves are dying. Let's get on the boats and let's sail away to Valinor. Yeah, it's so, they, they go to the Undying Lands. I mean, whatever. You there's know what that saying? poignancy that just disappears as soon as you start mentioning like, oh, if they if we could just pump them full of to methril, they can yeah, uh, they could survive for another few weeks. <laughs> I know, man. It was, it's like what happens when they when they when they get the meth. Do they uh, do they just? Like, um, I, I just imagine like them rubbing it on their they, bodies. Yeah, I enjoy, I enjoyed too. And like when when they threw the meth rail by um, by uh, the leaf. Yeah. Like, oh, look at the leaf, Elrond. Oh my god! It we can make so much money off these <laughs> elves. <laughs> <laughs> we could just sell a, a, a outrageous markup. This is dirt cheap for us. I own the, They'll the, be the, literally the, dying to get some. Yeah, I will, man, uh, man, I will have the, the nicest carriage, <laughs> right? <laughs> the nicest carriage pulled by eight million horses because so speaking of that leaf, so that much leaf, money. Yeah. So speaking of that leaf, no, that no. leaf ends up blowing down. Ever downward through many chasms underground until it wakes up a Balrog. <laughs> I mean, again, it's like the visual stuff that, like, it, this is like, this is like visual shit that has no real, like, it, like it, it, it's like it looks cool. It's like, oh, that's good. It I'll, looks okay, but sleep. that should not decide yeah, no. the. the the story dude like like i've Cause always it doesn't make any sense yes yes i've always felt that doran and his people are are, are you know like delving they're, they're digging they're digging and then one day some poor schlub of a, of a dwarf hits a piece of rock and it falls down and then there you see the eye of the balrog and it opens and it's like oh shit right i've done it now and then uh, Durin's Bane, here, here it comes. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. And I think you were right to think that because it's in the lore. I mean, the idea is that they got greedy. They de- they delved too deep in search but of... But how, the- how, much, how much of a better Im- uh, visual so would that have better. been? It is so much better. You dig, oh, you God. dig, and you're like, oh, no, through our hubris, through our uh, greed, you know... It, through, that tr- becomes, trying to get rich off the, yeah. uh, off the elves' addiction. Yeah, or is he just trying? Well, that's that's not canon, dude. I no. know it's not. I, canon, I know, I'm just kidding. You know no, but just in trying to get rich or in their lust for digging up more gems and more mithril and more gold or whatever they were mining for, they mithril mainly, I think. Um, right. They they uh, stumbled upon the Balrog and woke him up, and it was that action that like woke him up, and and it's all it's almost like they they got their comeuppance like they right. they got uh punished yeah. that was their punishment for right. de- delving too deep and right, that makes right. sense but this doesn't make sense it's like oh i, I threw a leaf down there and yeah, it just kind of weird. flittered it down just, and it, it because as it went down it tickled his nose and he sneezed and he's like oh hello he he smelled elf <laughs> That's what happened. He smells elf. Oh, like, what's that God, smell? what is that stench? <laughs> Brr, I'm so angry. <laughs> I am actually looking forward to the series being over because this whole, like, our whole little thing happened because we wanted to talk about uh, the more, more esoteric uh, speculations about the Tolkien, uh, about right. Middle Earth. So we can get back to that. 
and we fell down this rabbit hole. And so I don't yeah, know if you, you if for those of you who are into the for our subscribers, our growing list of subscribers, thank you very much. And if you're into what we're doing and our discussions, uh, hopefully you'll stay with us after the series ends because we will talk about slightly more esoteric. Uh, material from actual Tolkien's uh, book. Yeah, that's that was we were our actually that was our, our initial intention. Like, okay, like look at our first, uh, the first video our episode we did one. Ab yeah. about the missing, like about uh, Tolkien changing riddles in the dark to suit the yep. the uh, Lord of the Rings narrative. And uh, yeah, we had a yeah, lively that's discussion. That's what we wanted to do. That's what but we, we got sucked into this. I know, and that's what we'll <laughs> go this, back. Actually, to, right. what we'll be doing. Yeah, we, we. I think we had fun though. It was good. Yeah, yeah. I, I actually like this, so it's cool. I, it it, it kind of you know gives us something. Yeah, I'm sure we'll keep so. talking about it even in the off season. Yeah, <laughs> like what <laughs> sh what <laughs> dumb decisions are they making now? <laughs> <laughs>